You know when you've seen the ugliest little dog you've ever seen in your entire life, but then the owner has put it in a cute little outfit to try and lessen the blow? That's basically these movies in a nutshell. I'm Tilly from What Culture Horror, and these are 10 bad horror movies with awesome effects. Number 10. The lawyer has to split 13 ghosts. This remake of William Castle's 1960 haunted house film 13 Ghosts is perhaps the textbook example of a guilty pleasure. Horribly written, poorly acted, choppily edited, but of course, barrels and barrels of fun to watch. A big part of the appeal is the sublime work that went into the movie's practical production elements, pertaining to not only its impressive set design, but also its revolting bursts of gore. And if 13 Ghosts is remembered for any single scene, it's surely the glorious sequence where lawyer Ben Moss accidentally releases the titular ghost from imprisonment, triggering a sliding door mechanism which immediately bisects him. The stunning, mostly practical gore effects show Moss falling to the ground in two parts on either side of the doors, giving the audience a practically medical glimpse at his surgically sliced insides. Director Stephen Beck, who spent several years working at Industrial Light and Magic on films such as Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade and The Abyss, demonstrates a real aptitude for melding eye-popping practical and digital effects into a seamless whole. Number 9. The Wandering Skeleton, Wishmaster Despite being a surefire cult classic largely due to Andrew DeVob's admittedly terrific performance as the evil Jin, the Wes Craven produced Wishmaster is in no way a genuinely good movie. It's lousy script failing to deliver on its admittedly enticing setup. But the film's opening sequence, which explains the origin of the Jin, nevertheless serves up an all-timer gore effect. When a Persian emperor asks the wish-making Jin to show him wonders, he mischievously responds by slaughtering everyone in the vicinity. This culminates in a spectacular beat where one poor sap begs for help as his skeleton comes to life independently and bursts forth from his own body. Director Robert Kurtzman, also a legendary Hollywood makeup effects artist, lingers on a series of stunning practical effects as the skeleton forces the fleshy human form to break apart, particularly the man's head which cracks open to reveal a bloody moving skeleton underneath. Between this and Devov's scenery chewing performance, this is a movie that has definitely earned its right to exist. Number eight. The Mirrors. Poltergeist 3. The ludicrous Poltergeist 3 is only remembered for two things. The fact that young star Heather O'Rourke tragically died mere months before its release, and director Gary Sherman's inspired use of practical mirror effects throughout the film. Special effects coordinator Calvin Joe Accord made good on the movie's tightened budget, having just half the price tag of the second film by relying entirely on practical effects. Throughout the film, what we see happening in mirrors and reflections doesn't match up to what's transpiring in reality. Characters move differently than in their reflections, giving the whole movie an off-kilter vibe, no matter how bad the overall film is. The effect was achieved numerous ways as a given scene required, including seamless use of split-screen camera setups and motion-tracked matte paintings, but for most of the scenes Sherman and Accord used entirely in-camera room doubling. Basically, the reflection is actually another set built to accurately resemble what should appear in the mirror, complete with actors hired to serve as doubles for the main cast members. Even if you know how it's done, it's still an ingenious piece of movie magic and definitely deserved a better script to accompany it. Number 7. The Disappearing Lipstick Night of the Demons. 1988's Night of the Demons isn't a good movie by any conventional metric, but it is a fun blast of gonzo trash following a group of high school students who, while partying at a funeral parlour, end up inadvertently rousing a demon who wishes to possess them all. The film will forever be remembered for the infamous iconic scene in which Suzanne, an ever game linear Quigley, gets possessed by the demon and in her madness draws all over her face and chest with her tube of lipstick. The bizarre display culminates with Suzanne pushing the lipstick back into her breast, pushing it right through the nipple as if it were never there. Though it's obvious to anyone with knowledge of special effects that Quigley was simply wearing a prosthetic chest with a trapdoor-esque compartment in the nipple, the fact that the seams of this effect are basically invisible make this an all-timer for the horror ages. Number 6. The Liquid Nitrogen Face Smash Jason X Any movie franchise that has their main character ending up in space, uh probably has run out of good ideas, as is the case with Jason X. It's fun, don't get me wrong, but it is definitely not a good 
movie. The mesmerizingly stupid sci-fi horror sequel nevertheless lays claim to arguably one of the greatest death scenes and most impressive effects in the genre's history, when Jason makes short work of the ship's medical intern, Adrienne. While being autopsied, a thawed out Jason wakes up and dunks Adrienne's head into a vat of liquid nitrogen, which freezes her face solid in mere seconds, captured in a single fluid shot, which was presumably digitally assisted. Jason then pulls her head out of the vat moments later and immediately smashes it on the worktop nearby shattering her frozen face into bloody icy fragments before throwing her stump on the ground. But director Jim Isaac gives audiences a nice close-up glimpse of Adrienne's hollowed out face before Jason disposes of it, in one of the most creatively nauseating kills and kill effects in horror history. It's not only baffling that such a fantastic effect took place in such a bad movie, but that all the other effects within Jason X are hideously CGI'd. Number five, melting human flesh. The Incredible Melting Man. 1977's sci-fi horror film The Incredible Melting Man was near universally panned by critics upon release, though even its most strident detractors generally complimented the film's staggeringly grotesque practical makeup effects. There's little surprise given that the film's effects were handled by up-and-coming makeup artist Rick Baker, who would go on to win seven Oscars for his unforgettable work on films such as An American Werewolf in London, Men in Black, and How the Grinch Stole Christmas. The film follows an astronaut, Steve West, who on returning home finds that his entire body is beginning to become liquid drippy goo. And the only way he can stop this from getting any worse is by eating the flesh of other people. As awful as it might otherwise be, the film's melting effects are absolutely first rate, depicting the man's revolting decay with a persuasiveness the script and performances simply can't. The climactic scene in which West melts into a pile of bloody goo is worth the admission price alone. Despite how awesome the effects are though, Baker originally went even further with it, designing distinct stages of the melting process which were infuriatingly cut from the final product. Number four. Debbie is a cockroach, a Nightmare on Elm Street 4, the Dream Master. The fourth entry into the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise is far from the worst the series has to offer, but it's also a considerable step down from the first three films, and generally only elevated by the creativity of its elaborate murder set pieces. The easy highlight of death is poor Debbie, a ballsy tomboy who succumbs to her fear of bugs and creepy crawlies when she falls asleep. Debbie's fateful nightmare is a masterclass of practical effects, beginning when she's lifting some weights and Freddy pushes back down on the weight, causing her arms to split open at the elbows. Out of the wounds, Debbie then sprouts weird little buggy limbs and she starts to turn into a cockroach. While fleeing Freddy, she ends up falling face first into some glue, which ends up ripping her face clean off, completing her transformation into a bug. Oh my God. <laughs> and to top it all off, it appears that Debbie's now inside Freddy's roach motel, which he crushes with his fist, killing her instantly. As goofy as the series may have become by this point, this execution of practical effects elevates it to one of the most iconic kills in the entire saga of Freddy Krueger. Number three, the razor wire massacre. Ghost Ship. The year after he unleashed 13 ghosts upon audiences, director Steve Beck returned with another critically panned horror flick with one unforgettable effects-driven death scene. Ghost Ship may not have left much of an impression aside from its horrific opening scene, but oh boy, what an opening scene it was. The film begins by depicting the massacre of the passengers of the titular vessel, who are all sliced in half when a mysterious force unleashes a roll of razor wire across the liner's dance floor. The expertly constructed scene, cannily combining practical and digital effects spares no lurid detail as the hapless passengers fall in too, their gory entrails shown flooding out of their bodies, all while a young girl too short to be hit by the wire looks on in horror. Sadly, Beck retired from filmmaking after the release of this movie because he clearly had an aptitude for delivering meticulously assembled, effects-heavy set pieces. If only he also got scripts that were befitting of his talents. Number two, Michael becomes the beast, the beast within. Bladder effects were all the rage in 80s horror, by which a latex bladder would be inserted under a prosthetic and would be inflated and deflated to simulate an effect like pulsating flesh. While the gold standard of bladder effects is probably an American werewolf in London, the technique was also put to impressively disgusting use in the otherwise terrible 1982 horror, The Beast Within. The film follows a young man, Michael, who after his 17th birthday begins to transform into a horrifying creature. Most of us just call this late onset puberty, but okay. This 
culminates in a nauseatingly prolonged late film sequence where Michael's transformation is shown in full gnarly detail. His skin bubbles and pulsates, his human flesh tears apart to reveal the monster underneath and his face ends up expanding like a balloon, distorting his features in a way best only described as pure uncut nightmare fuel. And rather than show the mere fleeting glimpses of the transformation, director Philippe Mora lingers on this horror show for all of several minutes. The Beast Within may be really, 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 really difficult to take seriously otherwise, but this scene alone makes up for it. Number one, needle through the eye. Guinea Pig, Devil's Experiment. The Guinea Pig franchise is surely the most literal embodiment of the torture porn horror subgenre, given that the early found footage series isn't at all preoccupied with complicated things like plot or characters, but simply delivering the most horrific on-screen murder imaginable. The original film 1985's Guinea Pig Devil's Experiment was presented as a snuff film featuring real torture, though in actuality it was of course achieved with impressively lifelike practical effects. Though the acting has a few spotty, stagey moments, the gore effects are still incredibly convincing today particularly the horrifying final segment where the tortured woman has a needle poked through one of her eyes. While no doubt aided by its lo-fi visual presentation, which could help mask any imperfections in the effects, there's a clinical quality to the brutality on screen here, which gives it a more realistic, queasy feel than films with a far bigger budget. And that's our list. Know of any other bad horror movies with amazing effects? Let us know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and swing on by our channel again if you want to catch more creepy content. I've been Tilly and this has been What Culture. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to keep on looking after yourself, looking after each other, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.